Hi, welcome to SFG Cards and Craft. Today I would like to show you how I did this little card uh, using um, unicorn uh, white ink to actually sh to do the water, uh, what appears to be the water. Um, just showing you what I usually use. That's just my usual cutout. Um, this is actually a new stamp set for me. I've just just got this one. It's a lawn fawn. Um, what is it? Lawn fawn forest. No, sorry, Lawn Fawn Snow Cool. This is the forest border, Lawn Fawn Forest Border, and the Lawn Fawn Stitched Hillside Borders. I use all those in there as well. Um, okay, here I'm just showing that I've actually already stamped and embossed with White Stampenders uh, Superfine Ink, uh, sorry, Superfine Embossing Powder. And the inks that I'm using here at the moment is uh, the Distressed Inks, of course, Wilted Violet, Broken China, Picked Raspberry, Squeezed Lemonade, and Carved Pumpkin. And a little bit after I've done these, I actually bring in Chipped Sapphire and Black Soot. I'm just rushing through this quickly because we've, we've all actually seen um, on a lot of videos, I'm sure we've all, all seen this sort of thing done. The, to uh, and, and there I'm just holding to try and keep my fingers out of the uh, ink because this is watercolour paper and the watercolour paper tends to sort of stay wet for longer when you're using distress ink so you tend to sort of smear it and get your fingers in it and um, it, it's just not pretty <laughs> and because I've got so many colours on there I don't want to actually transfer one colour into the other colour at least not where I'm going where it's going to be seen which is up in the top half anyway so j just continuing on here with the chipped sapphire all the way around. Uh, I actually go around I think a couple of times just to sort of get it what I look what I like the look of. It's it's got to go in probably half to three quarters of an inch I'd say, sort of blending down into about that area. The idea of the colour in the background is actually to show that like the northern lights, the uh, aurora borealis which is in the northern hemisphere. I don't think it happens in the southern hemisphere. That's why it's called northern lights, I assume. Um, and uh, this is, it's just always intrigued me, the, the lights, how they actually just sort of glow. I think it's ionizing in the air that causes it, but I'm not sure why the colors change from one time to the next. If you, have, if you look up uh, either Aurora Borealis or northern lights on uh, Google, you Google it and you can actually see so many different variations in the colours of the lights and, and shapes and patterns, they're very pretty. Some of them are very pretty. Um, but anyway, th that's by the by. Uh, now this is actually the Lawn Fawn Forest Border. I'm actually using at the moment here, I'm using the negative space just to create like a, try and put some depth, I guess you could say, into the little scene that I'm developing here. Um, here I'm actually using now I believe that could be, f oh, I'm not sure what ink it is, I might have shown it there on the screen, I, I can't recall, I use forest moss, on, forest moss on the trees themselves, but as far as the shadowing goes, I'm not quite sure what I'm using, it really doesn't matter though, I mean you could use any green, I've actually chosen to use two different greens, the lighter one or brighter one I should say on, on the back scene, and when I actually come to do the actual uh, the actual tree cutouts, I actually use the um, uh, forest moss on those. Um, just here trying to sort of protect the white part, which is actually the snowy area from the uh, from when I'm doing the um, forest moss on the actual trees. With the uh, this, you, you don't actually drag it. You have because other because the trees are so delicate. There's such a thin area on the trunks holding the trees to the rest of the cutout. You just dob it on. Uh, you could use one of the dobbers as well, but I, I just happen to have these out on the bench, these, um, uh, what do you call them, the, the round thingy. Okay, that's just showing the trees what they look like. I'm, I'm rushing through this rather quickly because it was, it did take me about 50 minutes to do this whole video and I've had to cut it down considerably because my videos I've noticed are quite long compared to everyone else's so I've tried to speed it up and cut as much out as I dare um, to actually still try and leave the, the, the basically the, the information that's required in there. Um, but uh, I, I think, well I don't know, I mean I haven't actually viewed it myself after I've edited it just to see what it looks like but um, 
hopefully there's no not too jittery or, or jumpy or, or too many bits and pieces cut out here and there. Now what I'm doing here is just marking the area of so I don't actually go too low down because once when you do this you don't want to have where you've actually left lines where they shouldn't have been or, or, or gone too high and and um, put it up where into the tree line where you might see it. Now uh, this is actually just you just use the basically the cheapest brushes you can get. This this is actually just a I think it's called a China bristle brush. It was just something that I had in my stash from way back when I was doing um, folk art painting and oil painting. This is actually a brush that's commonly used by oil painter artists. Uh, it's it's just a um, this is just a cheap version of it. I mean a, a, pr a true oil artist would not use one of these cheap brushes. This is the cheapest you can get. Um, all I'm doing here is using the um, the white ink is the well you could use either unicorn white which is what I've got or you could use the uh, Yeti which I, th I believe is actually a um, a lawn fawn ink I think oh, don't quote me on that but uh, anyway you wouldn't be able to use the stays on ink put it that way but any of the other ones you could probably use uh, so what I've done there is I've just gone with the white ink and just smeared it straight down to try and smear the background a little bit uh, to, to make it look like water I'm just drawing it off here just to straighten the card out. Normally if I wasn't doing it for the video I'd just sort of go off and have a cup of coffee and leave it to straighten out on its own and come back. But since I'm doing it for the video I wanted to get through it. Um, okay so that's pretty much what the water looks like now. As you can see there's a difference between that and the top. It's sort of a little bit sort of appears to be water anyway. Um, now okay here I'm using the um, igloo from the this is from the uh, it's one of the Lawn Fawn Snow Cool stamp set. That's right, the Snow Cool stamp set. Um, just to put like a reflection into the water, but I think I actually might have put it just a little bit too high up for this scene. Because when I actually made this, the first card, I didn't put the reflection of the uh, igloo in it, and I've actually managed to put the trees down just a little bit lower. But it really doesn't matter, and I'm just whitening it a little bit there. Um, the ink that I used was Lawn Fawn Manatee. I've, I've only just recently got some Lawn Fawn inks and I'm quite pleased with them. But I've, I've managed, uh, well not managed, sorry, found that the lids are very, very difficult to um, remove. Um, I don't know if anyone else has had any problems with them, but uh, basically they are new stamps, uh, set, uh, sorry, new inks for me, and uh, they're very difficult to undo. Uh, now, this is just painting or putting in a little bit of highlights I guess you could say of, of all the items. Use it. This is just the, the cut out of the igloo. I don't have the dies for this one so I, I had to cut it with scissors. scissors. Um, the paper that I've used on the igloo and the snowman is just a Xyron cardstock. It's it's just a fairly cheap paper. It, or it's actually 280 grams cardstock. It's not just paper. Um, but I wanted something that was white. The watercolour paper is, is an off-white, it's not really true white. So the, the trees and the snow bank that I've used, which I've used for the, the stitched hillside border to cut, the snowman and the igloo are all cut with the Xyron paper. Um, now because it's not a watercolour paper and it seems to absorb colour very quickly, I'm not really getting a good coverage there. But it, it's enough, it just has to be a hint of colour. Um, the icebergs and the penguins, they are all done with the um, the Canson watercolor 185 gram paper, which is a I would think it's quite a it's a good quality paper, but I think a student quality by the price of it, because I only pay uh, twenty dollars for a, a pad of twelve sheets of A3, which is quite a large size paper. Um, okay, now with the penguins, oh. By the way, all those other colours that I put on there so far, they were just, uh, I think, broken china. Uh, the penguins, I'm just going lightly over the penguins just to sort of break down the, the glare of the, the whiteness on them a little bit, just using a bit of hickory smoke. It's, it's just around the edges, nothing... I mean, you could probably do without that. It's, it's just that I, I wanted to sort of give them a little bit of a shadow sort of a thing. Um, going in with the... This, is, this red is actually... Um, Oh, the red is festive berries. That's right, festive berries. The green is actually lucky clover that I put on their hats. Um, those are my sort of go-to sort of colours for the Christmassy things. That, that I've actually now managed to get all of the colours in the 
just in the mini distress inks I've got all 60 colors now and I'm finding that these two red and greens are the brightest of the, the ones that they've got in there that I've found I mean I haven't actually checked all of them but I'm um, by looking at the, the covers and that I think these are the the two brightest best ones for Christmassy things red and green um, okay so I, I just one of the hats I've actually made the, the hat itself red and the other one green there doing the same stripes red and green on this on the um, uh, scarf that's around one of the penguins neck um, the the beaks and the feet I actually do those with carved pumpkin I believe it is you could probably use um, any of the oranges but I think carved pumpkin because it's such a small area I think it, it shows up alright I don't think I actually had to do a second coat with it um, also that the carved pumpkin is used on the nose of the snowman as well um, around the hat band on the snowman is uh, just the festive berries uh, using a little bit of um, I think I'm bringing up black soot here for the hat or it could be hickory smoke first and then found that it wasn't quite dark enough so I've gone and no that, that is black soot it's too dark for hickory smoke so that's that's what I've used there just to darken it up a little bit on oh, no, a quarter inch angle shader and uh, most of the brushes I'm using is uh, they're all art basics uh, quarter inch for the angle shader usually sometimes I use a bigger one uh, the round brushes if I use the round brushes at all is uh, usually number two and a number four I have got a number six that I've used occasionally on things but I don't think I've shown that in the video yet um, I've actually got a lot of brushes from doing um, my art my painting I've uh, got a fair few painting I've done portraits and I've had some success with those but I actually because the cards are so much quicker and easier to make to be honest I really enjoy doing the cards the paintings sometimes I could spend months on just one painting when I say months probably a couple of months three months I actually did a uh, a portrait for my son one time for his I think it was for his 25th birthday and I never got it to him till he was nearly 26 because I wasn't spending a lot of time on it but I managed to get it done for him he's a fan of Metallica and I so I did uh, James Hetfield for him um, but anyway, that's, if anyone wanted to see any of my um, art, there's uh, a, an art, uh, a deviant art site that I've got called Space Farm Girl Deviant Art. Uh, in case any of you wanted to know, that is what the SFG Cards and Crafts stands for, a Space Farm Girl. That's just a name that I've actually chosen for myself when I've been playing um, online and it's stuck. Uh, I like it. <laughs> Basically, I like it. So that's what I've got. So uh, anyway, they're just just putting a little bit of uh, I think it was hickory smoke inside the in, inside of the igloo there. Um, I have actually taped using using um, the the glue glider glider and uh, uh, the what is it called the little just a, a wet glue anyway to stick the trees down. Um, just putting the ice on the the small ice block on or cube I, what do they call it? iceberg sorry on the water. To stick the penguin on. Now, with the penguins, sorry, this is the snowman, pen, snow penguin. With the penguins and the snow penguin, I've actually used two different types of dimensional tape plus the tape runner to give it the impression that it's sort of standing up a little bit rather than just laying completely flat down. I put the two millimeter on its hat, one millimeter on its body, and just the tape gl uh, glider on on its feet area done the same with the penguins just just to give them that little bit of a lift off the card at the top to, to make it appear that they've actually standing on something rather than laying flat on the card the igloo is actually just stuck straight down flat um, see the same with the penguins they're just going on I've already put the tapes on them the two millimeter at the hat one millimeter at their shoulder height and flat on their feet just to give them that little bit of dimension of, as you can see it's got that little shadow there behind it so um, okay, well there's the card finished. I've stuck the back on it and there's the two cards, the one I did earlier in the day and to get this right and then uh, the second one that I've done. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this and thank you very much. Sorry it was so speeded up and I seem to be talking over the whole thing so I, I hope it's not too distracting for anyone that's watching it. Uh, if it is, just turn the sound off. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.